Hey, this is Big Guy DIY Robert coming to you back with a, really a, a part two of three on repairs of my F-150. One thing I was thinking of doing was on an earlier video I showed how to repair the third brake light on top of the cabin of the pickup truck. <clears throat> and the reason for doing that is Ford has a leaking problem when with that gasket and over time that gasket begins to leak and it gets inside the truck inside the cab and it actually begins to rust the cab from the inside out and that was a very big problem with my truck because I was unaware of it and so it got beyond the point of uh, patching so on an earlier video I showed you the damage that was done to my pickup truck from this uh, rusting in the rear corners of the cab uh, holes that were so large you can put your fist right up into the holes or you can take your fingers and push it right up uh, here's a clip of this video that I recorded earlier um, on the damage that was done to my pickup so this is the passenger side this issue I have is on both sides of the truck but the passenger side is the worst so we look here i've already worked on this corner fiberglass because it rusts it out but if we look under the truck Here's my hand in relation to it. This hole is about uh, eight inches long. And my running board all the way up to the front is rusted. This goes for both sides. I brought this to a body shop to ask him about it. And he said what's happening is the water is coming inside the cabin and rusting my truck out from the inside. This rust is not being done technically from the outside. And one thing you have to look at is <clears throat> the rest of my truck, there's no rust in it except, you know, your usual drive shaft and stuff. but. My fenders My rear quarter panels Nothing is rusted It's just The bottom part of the running board in this corner So now I have my pickup truck back From repairs, so this will be uh, the part two of it um, originally I was thinking of doing this myself uh, I have the majority of the tools to be able to do this job but some of the really important tools such as the welder I didn't have the type of welder that was needed to do this I also don't have the facilities to do this this would have been done outside and you're trying to prevent rust and doing it outside with all the rain that has been happening was kind of dumb so I opted to have a location do it in, uh, in a town next door and I will give you their information at the end of this entire video and the cost of having this done. But let me show you the results of what was done here. So the rust, the real bad parts were in the corners of the cab here and the passenger side passenger side was the worst uh, the rust ran from here all the way up to the front it was open most of the way coming up and <clears throat> I knew that this running board the entire running board as well the corner had to be completely cut off I mean literally a cutting tool and cut all this running board off this is the end result let me zoom in this 
this repair runs all the way past the door up into the front of the frame there go to the back now what they did is with a cutting tool well first they had to remove my pickup truck bed they had to bring it back over a foot they had to remove my front fenders both sides they had to take off both doors and then they take a uh, cutting tool <coughs> cutting tool and they proceed to cut my door jam running boards whatever wording you want to use and they cut all of this completely off now the thing to know about this is there's three levels of metal inside here inside these running boards now what i mean by three levels <clears throat> i'm going to use the cardboard box to give you an example of what this looks like So here's a visual example of how I'm going to describe how the running boards are actually made on the Ford F-150. <clears throat> There's actually three layers of metal. This is going to be the outside of the truck, so your door will close over this part here. This will be the underside of your truck. So, in a sense, it's a U-shape. Both the front piece and the back piece come together underneath the truck and you'll see a ridge right here underneath the truck that's where it's um, clamped and then spot welded all the way along <clears throat> what you don't see is there is another layer of metal inside there so there's two walls so again this is the outside of the vehicle going down underneath the vehicle to the back then there's this second one. So when you look at the truck, you see the finished outside, but if you were to cut that off, you would see this piece here inside the truck. So in the pictures that you saw, you didn't see a finished edge. You saw this edge inside the truck and it had uh, like holes on the top of it. And you saw on the bottom, it was all rusted down here okay again that's inside this u-shaped piece of the door jam so that's how the rust had gotten in to the cab and what kind of damage it was doing so when they cut the door jam off they're cutting this entire out piece off they're cutting this entire inside piece off then they're cutting the underside piece that comes around and joins these two together so this whole thing which is actually a structural part of the truck is completely cut off then they order new metal they weld this piece back in and then they weld these two pieces back in joining the third piece so it's back to being a structural integral part of the truck itself and that's how the running boards are designed on a Ford F-150.
So back to my truck. When they cut it off, they were cutting off this entire cab all the way underneath here. You can see the joint right here. This is all welded, all welded, brand new metal welded on. Here we go again. The joint is right here that they welded. And I can actually see the weld right here. So it's completely welded all the way up here and all the way forward. As you can see here, but I can't get in behind here because of the camera and the door angle. But that's why they had to take off the front fenders. Let me show you underneath. So the box I was showing you. This is the other part of the box. This underside here is all cut off. Here's the ridge I was talking about. This is where all the metal comes together and has to be welded all the way. Trying to block the light so you can see. So you can see they cut it. Uh, see my cut starts up here. Cut the cross. This is a new uh, welding up here around this bracket. So originally in my cab, this was a hole. This whole thing back here was wide open. Underneath the cab, this was all open right here, where the tip of my finger is. Not this part here, but inside. And that was open all the way up to the front. So this is all brand new metal here that they put in. After they put the metal in, I asked them to use like a rhino liner material to rust proof this up. So this is what you're seeing here is this rust proofing stuff. And they even did the rear part of my fender here as well, which is nice. And then they carried it up underneath here, up across the top and they stopped in the inside. They also hit my frame all the way up, full length. Reattach my uh, steps here. So this wasn't even the bad side, but you could take your finger and just push up against this metal and your finger would go right through. The passenger side was the worst. I had repaired these corners about a year and a half ago with metal and fiberglass and it it was already rotting out. The whole underside of this was wide open. I could put my fist right up and through without a problem. These are all brand new metal welded in on the corners as well as the running board. All the way up to the front. All right, part three of this body work has been done. And this is the undercoating spray. So let me tell you a little about uh, New Hampshire oil. It's, a, uh, it's an oil-based undercarriage spray. 
And when I'm saying oil-based in the first part of that is because when you buy a brand new car, um, if that dealership does waterproofing underneath, undercarriage waterproofing, that goes on and it has like kind of a caramel color to it and it hardens to the touch. The New Hampshire oil base does not harden to the touch immediately. It takes a while for it to harden and even then it's not hard to the touch. Uh, it'll still have a, a slight greasy film touch to it. So when it is applied, besides spraying underneath the truck, uh, it's also sprayed into your tailgate if you have a pickup truck. All tailgates on a pickup truck have what I call weeping holes or drain holes. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, when you flip your tailgate down, if you look on the bottom uh, of the lip, you will see holes across the bottom. It can range from two holes to as many as four holes. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you own an SUV or a pickup truck, both those rear tailgates will have those holes. Also your vehicle doors also have those holes. So when the product is applied, it's sprayed up into the doors, it's sprayed up into the tailgate, and then they cover everything underneath the truck, including the fender wells especially. Um, so I think that's it. Uh, when you do have it applied, you will find that you'll have a thin film covering your truck because what it is, is it's a sprayer. It's on a long wand and the tip is where it comes out. And it comes out on like a fine mist. So that mist kind of covers everything nothing you can do about it it's just the way the application is the thing to remember is don't wear nice clothes when you pick up your vehicle um, when you have to unhitch your trailer or hitch a trailer wear gloves you're gonna get the product on your hands and it has kind of a black um, color to it it is transparent but it is black there's a black tint to it uh, I found that out the hard way yesterday I was unhitching my trailer and I got it on my nice shirt. Does it come off? I don't know. I haven't done my laundry yet. So let me show you what the underside of my pickup truck is. So I drove it up onto the hill so you can get, I can get underneath there. But let me show you inside my fender well here. You can see the leaf springs, how they're black. The shock is covered. Now on my truck, I have this plastic liner that you're seeing right here. What he did is he sprayed up inside the plastic liner on top of it to get up into the fender well. Then he moved the plastic liner down and sprayed to get into this leading edge of the pickup. Because a lot of, look, there you go. There's that stuff. A lot of pickup trucks will rust right up here. So how to get this off? like this and then if you wear jeans and you finish it off like this there now you saw I had that tailgate cover well I had a little accident four days later and smashed the whole freaking thing but here's an idea this here used to be all brown now it's all black it's all covered there My weep holes is uh, ah, son of a bitch. I gotta stop putting my fingers in there. I got a weep hole down here, one here, one somewhere around there, and then one over there. It's the low spots on this. So one, two, three on mine. Actually, I know there's another one right here. So you can see the treatment in there. That shininess. Let me show you the rear end. That's your spare tire well, right there. So this is the whole underside. Let me go to expand view here. 
Oh, wrong way. There. So you can see how everything is coated. Now one thing I know is when they do apply this, they do not spray like rubber hoses and stuff. Everything is sprayed towards the metal. Or on the metal, I should say. Not towards the metal. So here is the underside of my truck. It's going up towards the front end. My exhaust. And then my motor. And you can see all my arms, axles, everything is coated. Fuel tank. Here's my uh, frame. Cab mounts. Come on, camera. There we go. So, rear axle. So, overall, it's still dripping on the driveway. You'll still find drips because this is still wet. The company I had done, I had it done in Manchester, Connecticut. I will put, excuse me while I get up. I will put his information down below in the comments. If you wanna use him, he is very good. So uh, the thing to remember is when you're having this done, it's not one of those jobs where you drive in it's done that day and then you go home. You'll have to leave your vehicle, so you'll have to plan accordingly when you have this done. But the gentleman that did mine, uh, it took, uh, I left my truck there for a week. I didn't need my truck, so I was totally cool with that. And uh, I told him about my fender wells, and so he went the extra mile to be sure that he got inside the fender wells. So like I said, previously I'll leave his information down below if you're interested otherwise you can go to the website of New Hampshire oil I am NOT being promoted or anything by them this is something I use this is money out of my own pocket as for the body work that was done by Bolton collision in Bolton uh, Connecticut on route 6 I will leave his information down below he's the one who cut off the lower or bottom part of my cab and rewelded all new metal on there and the job came out phenomenal. That took approximately three weeks. Uh, give you an idea of cost, what's involved in this. And the reason I did this is I want this truck to last another eight, 10 years. Um, so if you take the cost that's invested in having this done, it's it's minuscule versus going out and replacing the truck every six, seven years because the body rusts out. That's BS. There's no reason to do that, especially when the truck is in the kind of condition that my truck is in. Um, overall, I mean, my truck is a 2014 and it's, it's pretty much close to mint condition overall. So, Bolton Collision, like I said, did all my door sills, and these are replaced from the back of the cab. All the way through to the front of the cab, this is all cut off, this whole thing, and the new metal is all welded back in. So, kind of babbling, but that's me. So, overall, cost, I, my, my thought process is if I can get this truck another 10 years, 
I did really well on it. Uh, that's a lot less money out of my pocket. The longer you keep a vehicle going, um, cheaper it is in the long run, it really is. So under undercoating was three, I'm gonna use round numbers, 380 for the whole thing. Um, it does have to be reapplied each year or that's ideally, you know, money is always tight. So if you can do it, you can do it. Otherwise do it every other year. Um, and as the time passes, they won't have to spray as much as they did because some of this stuff does stick over time. It does stay in place. Um, for the body work, it was 6,000 to have it done. And yeah, it's, it's a lot of money, but it's a lot cheaper than buying another pickup truck just because of a cab. So any questions, rifle them down below. Hopefully all this information will help us, uh, the F-150 owners out there. Like I said, this is a 2014, so a lot of this stuff from 2009 to 2014 are on this truck, and they all have the same issues. Um, any comments, any questions, rifle them below. And uh, give me a thumbs up. Please sub subscribe, as I will continue to come out with new information as I try to update the Ford here and there. Uh, I don't know what's next on the project for this pickup. Maybe uh, a driver's seat. Because <laughs> um, mine is getting a little bent out of shape with my weight. So, that's it. Big Guy DIY Robert, signing off. Talk to you guys later. Have a good one.